Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and I've been reading Jane Eyre. This is my copy. I've been reading Jane Eyre for the month of uh, February, and I finished it today. I'll be talking about chapters 28 to 38, 28 to the end of the book, and the whole of the book. Uh, like I said, I just finished it today, and now I know the story of a Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, and what a wonderful, strange, beautiful, haunting book full of surprises and unexpected events and um, very familiar genres and storylines that have um, twists and nuances to them and um, very um, typi typical kinds of stories that are, are told, um, interwoven in, in a, just a very interesting, personal kind of way. The um, last portion of the book, when, when I had last uh, spoke about Jane, um, she had left the house of Mr. Rochester. There was this whole uh, fiasco, it was just uh, a complete debacle with uh, the wedding with Mr. Rochester, and then it's crashed. We find out that he's already married, um, his, his wife is alive, is still living in the house. She's the lunatic in the attic, uh, setting beds on fire and biting and stabbing people. And Jane just says, I, I, I can't, I can't deal with this. Um, even all, all of Mr. Rochester's, um, pleas and different ideas on how they can make it work. It, it's just too much for her. And we leave her at a, at a literal crossroads. Um, she leaves in a hurry, uh, doesn't pack anything, doesn't bring uh, supplies or preparations. She has no money, no rations. Um, she has her faith. She, she really believes um, that God will be there for her. And as I was reading it and getting getting to this point where there was a, a crossroads, I was wondering, are we moving on to another set piece? That this book has been uh, constructed with um, major set pieces. Uh, her um, childhood home as an orphan being mistreated by uh, this household, um, her school years, um, then moving on to her as a young lady, um, um, meeting Mr. Rochester and falling in love and having all of these uh, strange, fantastical things happen. Are we going to stay with Mr. Rochester or are we mo moving on? And it turns out that we do get a whole new set piece. Um, it begins with this absolutely harrowing uh, string of days where Jane becomes uh, destitute very quickly, uh, starving, um, turns into um, someone that has to resort to um, begging, going door to door, uh, asking for people's uh, sympathy and generosity, uh, becoming a pariah, going into little shops and she, she's in this new town, very small hamlet, um, and distinctly having the feeling that she's unwelcome. Um, she resorts to trying to trade or barter a, a, a handkerchief for her, her used gloves, asking if she can sit, um, being thrown out of doors, having doors slammed in her face, um, being given the food that was going to be the slop for pigs, sleeping outside in the muck, mud, during the rain. Um, and just very quickly, she's just um, stripped of every, every dignity and just left with that uh, very personal, internal um, struggle for survival. She needs to eat, she needs to drink, she needs a warm place 
to be able to rest and for days she has had none of this and um, she had knocked on the door of the uh, church in this little town and the the pastor had had gone away and the the woman that was kind of taking care of um, like the guard house of the church just um, turns her away everyone's turning her away and there's a night where she sees a light, she, she goes towards it, and she sees through the window um, this family, or a, a group of women, and they are just talking around the table, and um, they're, they're f friendly and lively, um, and in um, a comfortable, comforting, cozy setting, and she knocks on the door, and she is dismissed. Just um, get off of the property. What are you doing here? You, you, there's no good that can come, that can come from someone uh, loitering around at this time. And we have uh, Jane uh, begging for her life, saying, "I'm going to die. It's it's been days since I've been able to eat and, and, and drink, and I'm I'm now um, f fatigued and." worn out and it's rainy and cold and the pastor who had um, been absent from the church in town was actually visiting this house was it was in this house and um, he saves her life he saw this exchange while he was uh, on his way to the house and he, he brings her in um, they, they try to get some answers out of Jane but she's just so worn down and we have an extended sequence where Jane uh, recovers but is, is spending time uh, with these people and meet, meeting the woman um, the, the man the pastor his name uh, is a very strange name it's Mr. St. James and we get to know him and um, his domineering uh, character and um, Jane recovers and learns to really get along in, in this household. She wants to be useful. Um, she doesn't want to be a beggar. She's very clear, clearly asking um, for help in way of em employment. Is there somewhere that I can work and be of service? And it turns out that just in this house, she can be serviceable and of, of use and they, they have just lively friendly conversations um, the pastor does uh, mr. st. James does get her um, employment eventually to work at a school and uh, again um, all of the things that we've read um, about her life uh, consistently build on top um, build up through the book she, she is um, educated, well-schooled, has experience in tutoring, and is um, knowledgeable and capable of being a school teacher. And it does bring her fulfillment. And we finally get this uh, info dump. It, it's a revelatory moment in the novel where all of the coincidences, all of the stereotypes of a 19th century novel, um, all the stereotypes about uh, romances and all of that, just they, they all just come down at, at one moment and it's uh, a snowy night. Uh, Mr. St. James um, has trudged uh, through the snow and there he is with, with uh, Jane. And we learn all this stuff. And it's all the stuff that you've always learned at the end of uh, a novel, um, this kind of like 19th century novel, where um, not only is uh, just unexpectedly, um, it turns out she had a, a distant relative uh, that she barely knew about that had died, and now uh, she's the heir of a fortune, and instead of being completely destitute and poor and um, uh, subject to a life of um, Im impoverishment and um, hard toil, uh, she's now uh, incredibly wealthy and she has a fortune. And 
uh, the, the, the random people that she met at this house, it turns out that uh, she's actually related to all of them too, and they're all of her cousins, and uh, so she's now, instead of being poor, she's rich, and instead of being uh, an orphan, she now has a family. And it's it's forgivable it's forgivable because the 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 whole story and all of it is so entertaining and um, m so much of the story does have that uh, theatrical fantastical uh, element to it and it it, it works really well. Uh, Mr. Saint James, uh, so much like the, the the major figure in every set piece that we've seen Jane go through. Um, does um, exert power, and he becomes this uh, domineering, despotic character. He, he seemed to be so warm and friendly, um, and um, thoughtful and generous, uh, generous in helping uh, Jane uh, recover and get herself up and about and, uh, in, in a good situation. Um, now Jane has a fortune. She wants to take care of, uh, take care of the family. Uh, she's in this house. She's now learning German and reading Schiller. And um, uh, Mr. St. James wants her to start learning Hindustani because uh, he's going to be going off um, on a missionary project uh, to India, and it's this idealized, romantic, skewed version of um, bringing God to the world, bringing God to India so they can learn about Christ. And just in this, this very long, strange, baffling conversation, um, he, he wants Jane to go to India with her as, her, as his wife. And at first she agree, conditionally agrees and says, well, I, I will go, but not as your wife. Uh, the fact that they're related seems to be, uh, or recently related, seems to be secondary. It's that it's this um, obligatory mechanical um, marriage that's uh, set up outside of any bounds of love, but um, instead to uh, conform to the structures of um, the society at the time. That, 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 that he, he can't go off with a woman, she can't just be a woman by herself going off, and he's just so determined that um, the, the only way this is going to work is that if they're married. And it's just menacing and domineering and despotic. The, the, the way that he says, um, um, you know, if, if, if you don't marry me, you're turning yourself away from God. Uh, and there, there's no other future for you. And he just keeps hammering and hammering and being, um, being cruel and being manipulative and changing tactics and then be, being, being warm and kind and just seeing what he can do to, to, to marry her. It doesn't, it doesn't play out. Jane, um, this all the while, with all of these things happening, um, f have, having a new family, um, coming, in, um, coming into um, fortune, f finding um, people that she feels comfortable around and uh, in a household that she loves, all, all of that kind of stuff, a, a profession that she feels good about. She still has Mr. Rochester on the mind. And this was all just one large set piece. But finally, um, she wants to go back to uh, Thornfield. Um, there's, she, she has learned um, Mr. Rochester was looking for her. Um, there were advertisements all over England. Mr. St. James, when he gives this info dump about her fortune and her family, also reveals that he knows that the alias that she has given is um, th thinly veiled, and he knows that she, she in fact, is Jane Eyre. And so um, she goes on this long journey, um, 
back to Thornfield, the, the, this uh, town, and comes across Mr. Rochester's father's butler. And we, we, <clears throat> we learn uh, the house is now gone. The Thornfield house no longer exists. It burnt to the ground. And it was set ablaze by Mr. Rochester's wife, the lunatic, in the attic. Uh, she died as a result of this fire. Uh, Mr. Rochester saved everyone that was in the house, all, all the servants and the housekeeper. He tried to save um, his wife unsuccessfully. And Mars himself, and uh, eventually, or consequently, um, is um, wounded, lame, and blind. He's blinded. And he, uh, Jane, Jane's learning all of this. He's at another one of the um, estates that uh, Mr. Rochester had. And she goes to visit him. And... It's, it's the reunion. It's the catharsis of all of these things coming together. Um, Mr. Rochester now is um, uh, crippled and, and blind, needs, um, needs help, and he's also just um, been uh, despondent. All, all of these um, events of rack and ruin, uh, his longing for this woman that he loved, the fact that now that the, the lunatic, uh, his wife, is now dead, um, all, all of these terrible things. And we just get a wonderful moment of um, Jane loving Mr. Rochester and Mr. Rochester loving Jane um, and coming together. Um, and it's, it's the life um, of Jane Eyre. Um, I was so impressed with this novel. Um, the third act, um, that set piece that I've been talking about in this video, um, again, was very impressive. It, it was a whole new location, a whole new setting, a whole new atmosphere, a whole new cast of characters, a whole new set of problems, um, uh, events to test, um, Jane's morality and uh, mental fortitude. Um, we, we, we got to see um, her highs and lows and a whole spectrum of her um, emotions. We've seen her as a little girl, uh, as a very young girl, um, and a teenager into a young uh, lady as an adult. It was, it was fantastic. I, I loved it. Um, and, yeah, so this was the first time that I've read Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Um, thank you for um, reading along if you have had. If, you had. Um, if, um, if you've read it and just would like to share your thoughts, please, um, please do. So, um, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment if you would like, and take care.